My name is Dr. Jason Friday. Um, I'm a psychiatrist. Uh, I'm uh, board certified in general psychiatry and child and adolescent psychiatry. Um, I uh, decided when I got out of uh, training that I wanted to um, make a, a big change in, in uh, my community and a big change for psychiatry in general. Um, and a big part of what I wanted to change was to bring uh, the most advanced treatments uh, the most cutting edge and uh, effect, effective treatments that we can um, that we can bring to this community, um, and certainly a lot of what I found to be lacking was the the lack of progress that uh, a lot of the psychiatrists just weren't um, daring enough, I, I might say, to try some of the newer technologies, and so it was uh, not growing as much as maybe other major educational centers. Um, uh, like you might find um, in New York or Chicago or something like that. And so uh, I wanted to have doctors that were going to be able to um, learn about some of the, these new technologies in a way that was going to um, further our treatments um, and, and complement everything that the, the psychiatrists uh, medica with medication treatments and therapies and um, help to get the best outcomes possible. Where is Redemption Psychiatry located? So we, as, over the last five years as we've been growing, uh, we've opened up uh, many different locations. We started out in Gilbert, Arizona, and then we moved to Chandler and, uh, and Phoenix, Central Phoenix, and then opened in uh, Glendale and uh, a West Phoenix area as well. So we have five locations. When did you first hear about TMS? How did you hear about it? And when did you decide it would be right fit for redemption psychiatry? Um, got very little training on TMS in uh, in uh, residency, which I think is a, a really um, sad state of affairs right now. Is that uh, residents coming out should be should know the most about the the uh, most advanced treatments, be up on the research, and and so it was really disappointing that we didn't get very much in residency, but it's not uncommon. Uh, so it wasn't until I, I, I founded Redemption Psychiatry and we were really trying to uh, look at, at those advanced treatments, things that are, are really going to help um, people to get beyond medication and therapy. And uh, as we were looking at all these different treatments, uh, my doctors brought the, the idea of doing TMS to me and I'm really, really passionate about it. And I uh, have to be honest, I was kind of skeptical about uh, TMS I, because I hadn't had any patients that had actually tried TMS, had actually had any improvements, and so I think uh, some healthy skepticism is, is normal, but we're uh, also you know, looking to the future, looking to see, uh, let's give things a try, let's uh, look at the research, and let's try to bring um, that research to, to our patients and, and to find out how, well, how much um, how effective that can be, and I'm glad that we did. You know, when we started doing uh, TMS in uh, uh, 2015, we uh, took our most difficult, most challenging patients uh, that we were constantly making medication changes, trying and failing m several different treatments, uh, all sorts of therapies, and and frankly, the patients that we were the most concerned about. You know, that that. Uh, you know, in between visits, we didn't know what was going to happen. Were they going to uh, end up in a hospital? Were they going to have a suicide attempt? Were they going to have a severe side effect from medication? And so being able to um, take those patients as we started in, and challenge the effectiveness of TMS, you know, seeing that it can be so effective in treatment-resistant depression, um, we said, okay, let's find, we've got plenty of treatment-resistant patients that we're kind of finding that we're reaching dead end on, that we don't know what to do next. And uh, I can't say enough about how astonished I was, how pleased I was to see the, the response of these patients. But I can honestly say I've never had any treatment that I've prescribed to anybody, whether it was a medication or whether recommending a course of therapy or sending to any kind of program to have the same response that I've seen with TMS. Uh, to have those patients come back after so you know the the first month of treatment and walk in the door uh, regular medication follow-up uh, you know TMS follow-up and have them leap up from the chair give me a big hug with tears in their eyes saying I can't believe I'm better and I've, I've never had that and so I was immediately sold on TMS after the first few patients that we uh, had treated 
And so from then, from that point on, we uh, really uh, been so much more interested to see where we can take that. What else can we do with TMS? Because to see how much better uh, patients can get with that treatment resistant depression and to see all of the research that's going on, it's just, it, it, it's exploding. It's very hard to keep up with all the different articles and publications that are coming out with so many different uses um, and trying to see how uh, different groups are replicating those studies and when can we bring that to bear? When can we start those kinds of treatments for people? Some of the most amazing results that we've been seeing have, have actually been in treating things that I never thought that as a psychiatrist that I'd ever be treating. Um, and, and frankly, that there isn't really even sometimes any good treatment for. Uh, so um, I'm really excited about the, the results that we're seeing with uh, tinnitus treatment. Um, people are suffering so much from this uh, annoying sometimes sound to crippling sound in their, that they're constantly hearing in their ears and um, can, can affect them emotionally, can affect their sleep, can make it uh, very difficult to uh, be able to function in life because of that. Uh, the hearing issue that comes with the tinnitus and we're seeing that we're able to get some immediate results with this treatment in, in most individuals and long-lasting condition that to be in a lower uh, state or even resolve. Um, so that's one that's definitely big on our list but uh, chronic uh, uh, pain syndromes, neuropathic pain syndromes have been responding to um, TMS treatment and especially the theta burst uh, treatment extremely well um, just and, and a lot of individuals that have the the chronic neuropathic pain are not getting adequate relief I mean you look at the statistics and say 7% of uh, people have some form of neuropathic pain and less than half of them are getting adequate relief from medication treatment and many of them that are maybe getting adequate relief uh, don't want to have to be reliant on medications or they're having side effects and so to have a non-medication option that's really effective and is, is gets them long-term relief without having to uh, be in every day to constantly take something uh, and, and risk side effects uh, is, is really amazing. I think it's going to be changing the, the way that we treat pain in the future. Um, another really uh, exciting development that for, for me personally because of being a child and adolescent psychiatrist, I treat a lot of children with developmental delays and autism, uh, tic disorders, and the, the efficacy that we're seeing for autism, um, for, uh, for different movement disorders like tic disorders, Tourette's, has been uh, absolutely amazing. We're just so excited about the direction that's going because really many things that we're, that we're trying to do to help to treat these children um, have limited efficacy. And, uh, and even there are people going in and you know spending thousands of dollars on treatments for their autistic children that have no uh, basis and uh, research uh, to, as to how effective they could be. Um, but they're willing to do anything that they can find and to see that we can reduce the level of irritability and rigidity and improve their executive functioning is, is just amazing. Families, they hear uh, the, those areas of improvement that we can have with, uh, with TMS for autism and they immediately are like, wow, that's those are all the things that we're struggling with. Those are all the things that I'm trying to help my child with and that we're, uh, it, it impedes our day-to-day -day, um, life and it also impedes their ability to get adequate therapy. And so as we're reducing some of these obstacles that they have um, to, to getting uh, adequate autism treatment, um, they're gonna make progress well beyond what they would in just the, the the therapeutic aspect of uh, doing ABA therapy or any other kind of school interventions. So uh, I feel like it's going to drastically change the way that we we treat autism as well. Do you have any personal uh, stories to share about maybe a child that was treated with autism uh, that improved uh, with PMS treatment and how did they notice the improvement? Um, What's, what's interesting uh, so far is that uh, a lot of times it's really difficult for, to, to get people to, um, to, to give TMS a try. And no matter how much you tell people, look, this is um, an amazing treatment, that we're seeing results that we, we wouldn't be able to see with therapy and medications, they're really hesitant to try something new. And so what we've been uh, uh, able to do is those individuals that are getting the uh, getting TMS for depression, 
um, and that we get the, the using the FDA approved uh, um, treatment that is also uh, covered by their insurance in most cases, uh, we can often do an additional treatment uh, that can help out with a particular problem. And so I've had individuals that have gotten the uh, FDA approved depression treatment and doing some um, targeted autism uh, treatment. And, and what we found is not only with the improvement in the depression, which of course would make it very difficult for an autistic child to, to make progress, uh, but also uh, the, the big benefit that we were seeing is that reduction in irritability, so that uh, having fewer outbursts, reduction in rigidity, so very, uh, the difficulty in keeping a um, being flexible with a routine and being able to, to prevent those um, stuck moments where kids are just not able to um, shift their attention and um, oftentimes that's one of the most challenging things for parents to be able to to deal with because it, until the child gets out of that loop and, and, and stops being stuck then they're not able to, to move on to the next activity of the day. And that's just not how our lives work. You know, really um, have to be a lot more flexible. You know, it can't all be routine. And so when they saw that difference in, in, be, in, the, in having improved flexibility and reduction in that trigger, the amount of irritability and outbursts, um, just amazing, amazing how much uh, uh, that changes the whole dynamic in the home. If I were a patient considering treatment, my options for depression or another related mental disorder. Um, what is it that I should know that you'd want me to know about redemption psychiatry as to why redemption is different from other um, practices in the area or in general? Yeah. And why would I consider coming to redemption over another psychiatric office? You know, in redemption psychiatry, I have put together a team of people that are really passionate about progress. They want to help to redeem families and our profession in general. We There's a lot of negativity around surrounding mental health and the whole idea of redemption and psych, redemption psychiatry is that we are trying to change the way that people view mental health treatment. And the redemption for an individual or for a family comes when, when that uh, difficulty, that treatment resistant problem it finally is seeing the, the, the results that we've been trying to get for them for sometimes decades. And so um, that I think is really what's, what sets us apart is that we have not just you know one person who uh, specializes in, in TMS and, and understands uh, ketamine, nobody can know everything. Nobody can be the right doctor for every person. And so even though we think you know, I'm going to go to the greatest mind in the country for, you know, if, if, it, if they don't see you and they don't see who you are, then it doesn't matter how much they know. And having a, a, a team of doctors that we're all dedicated to learning the most about these advanced treatments and becoming experts at it and consulting with each other and really trying to um, help uh, further the, the, uh, the advanced treatments for depression, for uh, anxiety, for PTSD, for OCD, for bipolar disorder, and just see that we can help the treat the untreatable. Um, it's exciting. And see the passion that comes with that from all the doctors. We share our experiences, our research, and you don't get that from most practices. Most people are, you know, on their own. They're maybe in some academic institution. The passion isn't about building up that practice necessarily um, and the, the treatment of all the patients. It, it is much more either about the institution or it's about um, themselves. And, it, and here it's not about that. That's really what sets us apart. It is about changing the whole dynamic of our community and treating the, those patients in our community so that we get the best outcomes possible. And your staff that you, uh, the, the other doctors you work with, they're also psychiatrists um, who specialize in adolescents or? Yeah, we have uh, a lot of different uh, uh, psychiatrists um, and di different uh, approaches that everybody has. And so um, they're some of the greatest minds that I know. Um, I feel privileged to work with them every day, you know. we're. Um, learning from each other all the time but we we have some that are uh, we have quite a few actually that are specialized in children and adolescents as well as uh, those that are just specializing in adults 
um, and uh, um, it it helps I think to have the the range uh, because a lot of especially like when I'm talking about treating um, some adolescent disorders like um, uh, like autism and tick disorders like and Tourette's and things like that you know these these are things that may persist persist into adulthood but the adult psychiatrist doesn't have the same kind of training that the child and adolescent psychiatrist has in just that first exposure in seeing how things are when they're at their worst when when the kids are, are trying to make progress they see how things maybe get when they're into adulthood and they've settled into a different state of uh, of being and sometimes they've kind of become complacent with this is as good as it gets I'm not going to make any more progress and so having the the specialists uh, of all ages I think really helps to understand the whole person